Rock the Bells Radio. Your boy Torre is in the building. Yo, it's so hip hop today. You know, we always put on for that classic timeless hip hop, but today, my family is here. Um, I'm super excited. If you haven't seen the lineup for the Rock the Bells Festival, you wild and you playing yourself. August 5th, Forest Hill Stadium, Queens, New York. It's gonna be crazy. And I got some people that's gonna be touching that stage from Bucktown. Hint, hint. My man Evil D is holding down the music right now. Hint, hint. And we're about to get into some classic hip hop, man. So make sure you keep it right here. It's LL's Rock the Bells Radio, your boy Torre. BCC, that's all I'm saying. And I'm not talking about your email. Let's get to this classic boot camp joint. Make sure the heads is ready, and then I'm gonna bring my guests in, and we're gonna have a great convo. Keep it where you need it. It's that Raw Rock the Bells Radio. Rock the Bells Radio, your boy Torre is here. Listen, man, you know, we put on for the culture each and every day around here. Obviously, the rest of the world is celebrating 50 years of hip hop, but we are celebrating 30 years of the boot camp click right now. We gotta make some noise for that. Make some noise, damn it. Yeah. Right. Look at me making up. Look at me making the artists make noise and shit. Um, so I already told you Evil D was here. He is one half of the beat miners. The other half is here. Mr. Walt, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? These guys produce all of your favorite records. To his left is my guy. Listen, I'm not even going to say his name because as soon as you hear the voice, you already know what it is. Tell the people who's here. Hi, guys. <laughs> b- 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 Monster Man Rock or Rockness Monster Helter Rockness Skelter Monster Sean is Monster. here, man. One half of the mighty, mighty Helter Skelter. Rest in power to our family, our brother, Sean Price. Uh, my guy, Vic Vicious. We done tore so many stages yeah. up. We done went crazy overseas and made all types of bread and euros. Absolutely. I ain't going to talk about nothing else. Rusty Jooks is here. What up? What up? You know what crime it is. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. And the man who is, is, is responsible for... So much of it, um, behind the scenes guy, but if you are part of this family, and that's what the boot camp click and Duck Down Records is as a family, if you're a part of this family, this man is no stranger to you. We got Big Drew High here, man. What up, Torrey? What up, Drew? What's good, what's good? You know what's good? August 5th is good. Because yes. that is the Rock the Bells Radio, Rock the Bells Festival. Um, make sure you go to rockthebellsfestival.com, August 5th, Forest Hill Stadium, Queens. You can see the boot camp click touchdown on that stage. Um, we're going to get some performances as well. We got a live studio audience here. We got all our people listening worldwide, whether they're in the car or listening on that SXM app. Man, so I'm just excited, man. Let's talk about 30 years of this of this thing right here, this fraternity. Um, Rock, I'll start with you, man. When you, when you look back on... The beginnings, you know, your first opportunity to touch down. Um, obviously, we waiting on Buck to get here. And we waiting on some of the rest of the guys from the family. But just talk to me about your beginnings and how you got down with the squad and just where it feels to be in 2023. Um, it started out, for me, it started in Brownsville. Right. You know, Brownsville, Brooklyn, salute to Brownsville. Um, Seth Low Projects. Salute to, salute to the low and Sackman Street. Like me and Steele from Smith & Wesson, we lived across the street from each other. So at some point when I was rapping around, I was one, it was, you know, when everybody wasn't rapping back then, it was only a few, it was only like a the, few of the us. The good that, old days. Right, it was only a few of us that rap in the projects. And I was, you know, I was, one of, I was one of those kids. I was like 13, 14 years old. And I knew Steele's uncle. I hadn't, I hadn't met Steele yet, but his uncle just one day was like, yo, you got to meet my nephew. And we met and we've been rocking ever since, you know? Crazy. So everything started for me from there, you know what I mean? And, you know, we was called something else. And, you know, I met Tech later and I met Buck later. I knew Ruck from, you know, every everything, all of the pieces just started to come together from that point on for me. For sure, for sure. Um, Drew. Yes. Your, your history in this game runs deep, obviously, from what you've done with Duck Down and, and Boot Camp Click, but obviously outside of that mm-hmm. as well. But just talk to me about, because a lot of people may not know your actual start and how you linked up well, this, with Buckshot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk about that for a second. Well, th- this is my start. This is my family right here where, where it all started for me, me in the music business. I met Buckshot and Evil D as an intern at Nervous Records. Right. So I was just up there answering phones, doing whatever I could do. Um, Buckshot had just and Black Moon had just signed a single deal with Nervous, and um, I had still aspirations of being a rapper myself, right? right. So, um, just hanging around these guys was like an incredible experience. Um, I started to do like a lot of different things for them, like getting them to shows or taking them up to radio or going to retail, just whatever we could do to try to get things going. But things hadn't really hit quite yet when they were first up there. But Buckshot used to come up to the label like every day and so we would hang out 
after work, I would go out with him. We would go do whatever, you know, just run around, get something to eat. I ended up um, teaching him how to drive. And I said, if I teach you how to drive, you're going to teach me how to kick some better bars. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's a fair trade. It's a fair trade. So we had a little trade off. And, um, you know, I bothered Ian Walt for beats. I was still thinking I was going to do my thing. I learned real quickly being around Smith and Wesson and Black Moon and then eventually Healthy Skelter that I'll be better off behind the scenes than in front of a microphone. <laughs> even though I'm, I'm I'm blabbing on though, even though they did give me my chance right. to yeah, rock on sure. the Black Moon album, you the sure. man. So under my belt, before I became a music executive or whatever you want to call it, I do have a record with Black Moon, Smith and Wesson, and Havoc from Mob Deep on, on my resume. The whole little question: right. Is there are there any? Other Drew High songs stashed away what or you, any B minus B. Yo, Rock, I he, do my job. Can I do my job? I needed to know. Right, like, can I, I need, do my job? I so, Drew High, are there know. other any other records that you may have? <laughs> I, I have a couple of other. I got one with Buck, and I have. I do have another verse on the boot camp record, but whatever. Later for me, mm. obviously, we open the, it, we open some, the doors from there. I have a demo or two. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm coming to the crib. I'm coming, uh, I'm coming to the crib. Remember this. Uh, that voice that you just heard was that. Evil D, which is a perfect opportunity to talk to the men who provided so much of the musical landscape for that boot camp sound, for that duck down sound. Um, Evil D, Mr. Walt, talk to me about you guys' start in to just making some of the grittiest, dustiest, most beautiful hip hop fucking music soundscapes of all times. Um, how'd you guys start? Um, just buying dirty records and having, you know, just the grime on there and just making beats and just listening to like Diamond, listening to Pete, listening to Tribe. Mm. And then that's one- That's Diamond D, that's Pete Rock. Right. That's Tribe, So Cold Quest. One day we were going, me and E, he just got the deal mm. at Nervous, we were going to Greek Fest. And um, footage coming, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> footage is coming, footage coming, Paul. Right, <laughs> so we was in my man, uh, Kasham, he had a sidekick, and he played Sally had a one track, mm. Sally got a one track mind, Diamond D classic. And I looked at E and said, Yo, this is how we supposed to sound, we're supposed to sound like this, son. This is how we supposed to do it. He started working, mixing all the records in the big speakers with your rule number one, you ain't supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. But we was doing it like- Everything you know, sounds great every, in the bigs. Everything, we gonna make records only for oh. Jeeps. That's all we gonna do. And that was the beginning of the boot camp beat miners, grimy Brooklyn sound. No doubt, no doubt. Evil D, um, your brother Walt spoke about you having a deal and then you getting into the music. What was it like, you know, obviously when Buck gets here, we'll, we'll top, chop it up with him about that, but what was it like you guys' process to getting signed, to getting into Nervous? Aw, oh, man, we, yo, let me tell you something. <laughs> we went up there and we actually performed. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, Chuck Chillout took us up to Nervous Records. Legend. You know what I'm saying? He, you know, we bumped into Chuck at a party and he seen us rock and he was like, yo, I could walk, I could kind of try to walk y'all into a deal. So we went up to Nervous and we performed for Michael Weiss and um, Gladys Pizarro um, walked in the room and was like, yo, I don't know who these guys are, but Mike, you need to, you need to sign them. And that's how it happened. Crazy. Crazy. Rock the Bells Radio, you are in for a treat as we celebrate 50 years of hip hop, as we celebrate 30 years of this duck down thing. Do remember August 5th, Forest Hill Stadium, Queens, that Rock the Bells Festival. Go to rockthebellsfestival.com right now. Scoop up your tickets so you can see these guys perform. So, Evil D, I want you to cue something up. We got Monster Man Rocco here. I want you to cue something up for Rock. And as you get that ready, Rusty Jooks. What's up, man? You know what crime it is, Rusty. I'm great, man. When we get back from this performance, I definitely want to ask about how you got included into the squad. You know what I'm gotcha. saying? And, and definitely talk about your journey as well. Um, but we're going to get to a performance right now. Of course, we got our live studio audience. Let me hear y'all. Yeah. Excellent, man. It's LL Cool J's Rock the Bells Radio. As we get the Monster Man Rocco, let's get some classic hip hop. You know the vibes. Oh, snap. All right. That's what we're talking about. Well, clearly the people are excited. <laughs> yeah. So, B, C, C. This is a little tune that we put out in, I believe, what, 96? B, C, C. It's called Operation Lockdown. It's me and my partner, Sean Price. Mm -hmm. B, B, C, C. We have Buckshot on the, on the intro and the outro and all of that. You know, it's kind of fly. Big up, Swift. 
It went down like this. One little nigga snuck through the door, peeped the seeds, knifed a few, then crept through with two more. Had to get nervous. That's three now, they want to break north. Too late, five more tore the door straight to fuck off. It's on now. Getting down in the trenches. Eight soldiers getting them more ashes, splinters on raggedy benches. Since this war, ancient sweet, this click dispersed. Then we transform the sh on fairgrounds, never spare clowns. Rock and rock, be the rooks, hold the square down. Are you prepared now? Watch it down. Any opponent who simulates, styles buff by me while your ass I obliterate. Demonstrate, tactics, you need practice. First of all, your monkey ass rhyme like you backwards. I should slash it. Wanna try to get beyond limits, timid. They can never get with Sean. That's word. Sean don't give a what about none of you niggas or snakes that sliver. And if you wanna come test the inflictor, I got your name, number, address, and your picture. This is a BCC and Double D in the 90 now we lock it down. This is the BCC and Double D in the 90 now we lock it down. my words. My heavenly words, words that the niggas locked up in 73rd prefer to chill. But the sun can't do that. Through the my temperature, tempted to bring it with your cruise at. You lack with the skills that it takes to make ends meet. Cause it seems that your ass is weak. My occupation, operation, locked down on your wrist. And then I came back out and I said, Who won test? Y'all, Mr. Maul, dude, aka Rock Ness. Y'all, got your check, y'all. Nothing can protect y'all. From Buckshot all the way down to the rep, y'all. We running through your set, y'all. Fuck the rest, y'all. We be the best, y'all. Yes, yes, I crack max north, south, east, and west, y'all. With no stress, y'all. How deep do I get, y'all? Got ancestors and decepts. I never met y'all. Ready to wet, y'all. Place your bottom dollar bet, y'all. Chess boards become mess boards if you flex, y'all. Nevertheless, y'all. We out to save this shit before it's dead, y'all. Lock it down with the full core press, y'all. This is the BCC. And double D in the night. Now make some we lock out it there, down. Man. Y'all gotta. This is the BCC. And double D in the night. Now uh -huh, we lock uh -huh, it uh -huh, down. Uh -huh. This is the BCC. And double D in the night. Right now we lock it right down. Right now. This is the BCC. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And double D in the right now we lock it down. This is what we do around here. It's Rock the Bells Radio at Classic Timeless Hip Hop. Um. Listen, outside of Rock just spitting his phenomenal verse still and Ruck's phenomenal verse still, there was no vocals over there. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is what real MCs do. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, TV track, yeah, yeah. get right to it, breath control, giving the people what they paid their money for. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. In this case, it's a lost what they, art. It's what a they lost paid their subscription for. <laughs> um, as we were talking before we went into that amazing performance, Rusty Jooks. Yeah. My man, Rusty, we got records together. We done toured the world a few times together. Yep. Rusty, talk to the world about how you got down <laughs> with the click. Well, I came on the scene around 97. Um, introduced, I mean, well, co-signed by Sean Price. You know what I mean? Um, for the Helter Skelters, their second album, Magnum Force. You know what I'm saying? All right, I met Sean. I met Yo, Rock, Sean. I do my job, Rock. Yo, saying, Yo Rusty, he, tell him how you he be, met he be Sean. Leaving, <laughs> he be leaving me <laughs> out. Because I ain't with nah, it. He be leaving me out. Go ahead, go ahead. All right, him, here you go. Him, my manager, him. my manager, Errol Mack. Who was Errol Mack? Rock cousin. Thank you. you know That's all I need. That's all I need. That's the end of the story? I was running around, you know, doing a whole bunch of singles in LA, and he was like, yo, I want to introduce you to Helter Skelter. You know what I mean? They working on their second album, see if you can get something in with them. And I was like, I bet, man. And he brought Sean Price around my way, Kingston on Kingston Ave in Crown Heights. And, um, you know, I spit for him, and it, it was a rap. He loved it. You know, I was just, you know, a student of the game. I was going to all their studio sessions, and you know what I mean? And eventually they let me jump on a title track and another one called Gangs All Hit. Um, just knowing the success that the guys had, obviously they were working on their sophomore album, The Click, especially being from Brooklyn, it meant everything. I was everything. a big fan It meant everything to us, right? I, yo, listen, man, that, that was the world right there. For sure, for sure. Rock, how you how you let them get stolen from you, bro? What happened? I was, I was about to comment. I had nothing else to do with it <laughs> after that point right there. Not because... Cause listen, we all everybody here knows that back in the days I was a grump, I was a grouch. Like if I didn't know you, I didn't really have, like I didn't, I wasn't good at my people personing. Right, right. You understand right, what right. I'm saying? So you know because you call those social skills. Like yeah, like like Ruck was all he was always better at that. You know he was he was way more of a people person. Huh? So. You know, that's probably why he. He said better. Him, he didn't you know say good. He didn't say he was good at it. Listen, he said he was better than listen, him. Listen, he's he. Yes, exactly. Now, we know we know Ruck, right? But I'm just saying, like, he was more vocal. You know, he was more. He he was better at more personable when right. he wanted to be. Right. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? So, you know, they they he he co-signed him. 
and Rusty just went bananas from that point on. You know what I'm saying? Pause. That just was what it was. For you know sure. I mean? yeah. uh, Drew, talk to me about, you know, bringing new people into the fold. Obviously, you have the nucleus of what the boot camp click is and what you're doing at Duck Down Records. When you start to look at expansion and bringing people in from a business standpoint, what was that like for you? I mean, I, you know, the first thing is like if you, you just take a step back and you think about the talent and the introduction of Black Moon, right? And right. you think about Buckshot, E, 5FT, Walt, that sound that they introduced. To take the next step to bring another group in the fold, Smith & Wesson, right? And for them to come in and have the type of impact that they had following Black Moon, now all of a sudden it's like, all right, you're two for two. Right. In term, not, not me, but yeah. the collective is two for yeah. two in terms of like the introduction. And you start to get a lot of doubters out there because it's like, even like I remember like the Source magazine, they would start to say like, all right, is this a, a particular sound? And now you're going to trickle it down to each group that, you know, comes underneath it. But then the next group introduced... Who wrote that? Riggs? No. <laughs> possibly. The next the next group introduced Helter Skelter, right? I get Nocturnal, now you're three for three. And then OGC come right behind that, and you have the storm. And literally, I, I felt like out the gate, Boot Camp Duck Down was four for four on, on albums that just made a, a serious impact on the sound, on style on dress on like everything that was going on verbiage i mean smith and wesson renamed the whole borough big facts they yeah. renamed the whole borough big bucktown facts. worldwide right? like that gets that gets forgotten oh, often like jay-z has said that right town biggie has referred to brooklyn as bucktown for sure mob deep somebody you understand what i'm saying like it's like yeah so i did you know bucktown is it's official but to, to answer the question right because I, I went back on it to before we can like even think about the next, we were putting, I, I just want people to know, like we were putting a lot of time and energy and attention into those albums. And music is kind of made differently today. It, you know, it's made a lot of home studios. And we used to go into studios in the middle of the night and we would stay there from, you know, maybe we'd start a session at 11 and we didn't leave till four or five in the morning. And we would bring in different people to do different vocals and Rock and I would, I remember sessions where Rock and I would experiment with like auto tune and different things for choruses or just particular words on like you know uh, clans posse's cruising yeah. click. like just yeah. little yeah. things yeah. that we would do but these albums could take and and ian walt obviously as production but these albums could take four to five months just to make sure. and then to mix and go on so like the mind frame wasn't so much expansion it was more like you know um quality over quantity and maybe we were a little late catching up to that game of expanding but I think like what we did initially and what these guys did with their introductory albums was just, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's, priceless. You know, classic, classic material. And that word gets thrown around a lot. But when you go back, you know, 10, 20, 30 years and these records still have the same impact and they still make the people feel good. And you guys are still touring and traveling the world. Um, it's a testament to the work that was put in into the skill set that all of you guys possess from production to MCing to Drew even just mm -hmm. you caring enough about the culture and caring enough about the guys to make sure that the guys made the best music that they could make um rock talk to me about the the I'm taking it back right 30 years talk to me about that moment when the success starts to hit you famous you know what I'm saying like mm -hmm. you can't move around Sackman like you did or maybe you can I did right but like I didn't realize I it's a you know it's it's an adjustment cool. period like you know I seen it you know I seen it approaching you know what I mean because like like Sun said like it started with Black Moon and then it was Smith and Wesson and it was right next you know they right next to me it's like I'm on the third car on the train the train is gun you know it's gonna go into it's the going, station right. so you know like I'm prepared and I'm hyped like it it was more of a excitement than it was a nervousness because. Cause I love rapping and performing so much. I was like, I'm, I'm about to get my chance. And I seen that we had, it, you know, so it wasn't that, but it took me a while to realize that it had happened because I don't know if I ever had that moment where I was at home and the song came on the radio or somebody with your rod, your turn on. I don't know if I ever, I don't remember that moment. You know, I just remember people starting to look at me weird. You know what I mean? And I would be, I didn't know how to drive yet. I'm still taking public transportation and people were on the trains looking at me crazy. And I'm thinking this is somebody I had a problem right, with right, before. Right, like, right. so it's almost about to be a whole nother problem. And they just a fan. Just a fan. 
crazy. You know what I mean? It, it took a while, but eventually I got, you know, I, I got used to it. You know what okay. I mean? I'm a very approachable person. Stop being like that, y'all. <laughs> for real. Like, like I have to, I feel like it's necessary for me to say this. Right. It, I'm different now. I like people. When you see Rock at the Rock the Bells Festival, show up, give him dap, show love, take a selfie. Right. You know what I'm saying? Do all of that. Right, right. It's going down Forest Hill Stadium, Queens, New York, August 5th. Get your tickets right now. RockTheBellsFestival.com. Evil D. We're going back to you. We're going to get into some music. We're going to bring in some of the rest of the members from the Boot Camp Click and the Dug Down family. Keep it right here. It's LL Cool J's Rock the Bells Radio. Your boy Torre. I know the vibes. It's Rock the Bells Radio. Your boy Torre is here. The Boot Camp Click is here. Make some noise. Listen, man, as we celebrate this 30 years of Dug Down and what they've been doing um, for the culture, what they've been doing for the community and music, and obviously what we continue to put on here at Rock the Bells Radio. Um, I'm super happy that my guy Buck is here. Buck, what up, man? Woo, woo, woo. Is my mic on? Yep, your mic is on. But you, if you want to turn it up louder, like, you yeah, know, I just want to hit myself. Buck, he want the mic loud because he about to spit. No, is my mic. <laughs> is my microphone on? <laughs> What's going on, man? You know what's crazy is. I can never, never, <laughs> he ever. About to, he about to low bro me. Yeah. <laughs> I can never think of Torre without yeah. thinking the fact we, we grew up together uh, in, in, yeah. in, in, in CI. We grew up together like youths. So to see each other in the music business, to me, is just incredible. It's crazy. Nah, it's, you put in so much work, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Buck. And you know, just man, like, I would see you on Video Music Box and then come outside <laughs> and you and Mighty might be in front of the building. And my mind was blown. Like, yo, I just saw this guy on my black and white TV because we didn't have color. That's um, right. <laughs> and, and you was out there, but that made, you know, for everything that I've accomplished, you so much a part of that. Not only because I did an album on Duck Down, but also because you made it tangible. You made it real. It was like, Brother. oh shit, this guy really did it. And he right here and I see him on my community. And Brother, he right here, but he's the is, star. That's no, but that's what I'm saying. And we we wasn't even that that conscious of of, of the stuff, the star and everything. Me and Mighty and all of them, we come out the building, do a tour, come off the tour, and then go in front of the projects. That's a fact. Hang in front of the projects <laughs> and just hang out and be like, yo, you know, and I would always see Torre and this brother just always struck something, you know, he knew all my all my family, the Blakes, you know, my uncles, co my cousins, everybody. So we all just had this, it was like an energy, you know, just a, like an energy. No and doubt. now, and and then, and I knew, and when I st saw you, you know, grinding, I said, that brother's going to make it because he just got that energy. He, thank he you, man. It. Thank you. And, and thank you for the opportunity to, to release um, a body of work on Duck Down. Like that logo still means everything to the coaches. So just brother, having one of those we, we, under as, my butt. As the independent power... As we call ourselves, the independent powers of the music industry, it's a blessing to have work with you. No you know, doubt. again, no because doubt. you was you put in work with every, you you represented what we what we embodied in the sense of saying I'm an independent person, but I done been with the biggest of the big from 50 to whoever you want to mention. I got my own show on Sirius Satellite Rock the Bell. I done been, don't get it twisted. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I did this because of my grind. No doubt. And that's the reason why, you know, it's, it's a pleasure to just to keep the cycle going. Appreciate and it. And all the independent people out there that love um, independent music and labels that, because remember, nobody really had independence. Right. right. Everybody wanted to be on. Nah, you jam. guys are the blueprint. You guys yeah. really you really show, especially us on the East Coast, that it, that it could be done. D.O., what's up, man? Top Dog is here. Top Dog. Good, good, good. Chilling, man. Good to see you, my guy. You good? Uh, yeah, man. Finally, yeah. You this know. is all like a family reunion. Just, just seeing everybody. You already know, man. For sure, for sure. Make sure the people can hear you. And the queen, Bernard Dead is here. We gotta clap it up. We gotta clap it up. We gotta clap it up. Hey, 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 hey. What up, Bern? How are you? I'm doing good, sis. How you feeling? I'm all right. No doubt, man. So we here celebrating 30 years of this, this, this conglomerate, this family of Duck Down and, and Boot Camp Click. Yes. Um. Ooh. It's, it's crazy, right, Buck? So take me back to, you know, Drew was up talking and, and Evil D and Walt were talking about the nervous situation and how you guys connected. But when you guys decided to go and start your own thing and start Dug Down, just give me, put me in the mindset of what you were feeling, what you thought was missing, or why you felt like there was a need for you guys to start your own label. Um, well, first, um, there was a line I said, um, um, duck, um, duck Down started out as a management 
then a record company. Even then they wasn't bumping me, but I ain't give a what. Still representing every time I had to give them buck. So we started out as a management company, and then we went into a record company. And one of those big transitions in those moments, again, was the fact that, you know, I had a discrepancy with my with my with the record label nervous at the time. Um, I first found out, hey, you know, you can owe somebody money even after you sell a whole bunch of records. And that just blew my mind. And it was a bash, you know, on the table. And from that point, me and, and, and Drew knew that, you know, we not only could step it up from the record label side, from the management side, but it was at that point, it was like, let's just do, let's just take what we doing management wise and let's take it to the next level. Cause I'm, you know, I'm skipping you through, you know, turns. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like we went from a management company and then me and Drew knew that we had, that there was talent in these brothers. Me and Drew knew that there was talent in, in what they did. So, you know, there was a, a compilation that was made, um, the very first compilation with all of them um, and all of us bugging out on camera. And we used that as the means to work with um, our distributor, you know, Brian Turner, Priority Records, For where sure. once again, there was a lot of good people over there, you know what I'm saying? It was like the best of the best, you know? You know, Jay-Z was over there, you know, with his with his movement, you know, uh, Master P was over there with his movement. So we we all had like this, this little circle of energy of like pure distributors, you know, everybody that had their own stuff. No doubt. And um, that, that, at that point, me and Drew knew that we we stepped it up from just management to now knowing about infrastructure, marketing, promotion, you know, all those different things that it takes to actually bring the brothers from an independent label level to the major level. Sure. And that that's what we brand ourselves as. You feel what I'm saying? Because a lot of people are independent, but they can't be up there with Method Man and Wu Tang and all For the sure. rest of these big For sure. but but Boot Camp Click did it. Absolutely. And still doing it, man. You know, it's a testament to like I said earlier, just not only the grind but in the love of the culture, but just making superior music. You know what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, when you got dope records, dope records is always going going ring off. We were talking about the the um, the catalog of Dug Down, right? So you got Black Moon's album, then you get Smith and Wesson, then you get Helter Skelter, and then you get OGCs. Um, Dio, talk to me, talk to me about just the the lineup, the setup, right? Because these are blockbusters. Like nobody knew what to expect when Into the Stage drop, but it dropped and it goes crazy. And then you get The Shining, you know, and then you get um, Helter Skelter. So talk to me about when it was you guys' turn, what did you feel about putting your records together? Was there any pressure? Or how did you guys go into the creative space? <laughs> pressure, pressure, yeah, pressure bus pipes. At the end of the day, yeah, um, the format was from Buck to Smith & Wesson. So I, I came about on Smith & Wesson's album, you know, with the sound boy for sure. and um, that was like pretty much my standout verse for, for, for now to forever right, right now. forever timeless so, being that they was uh, Smith and Wesson and they like they was trying to put uh, put together a, a group for me like uh, you know you can't be part of us like, <laughs> so we already Smith got this yeah, right. we got Smith this. and Wesson <laughs> we gotta figure something <laughs> out so I, you know what I mean so you know and we had a whole bunch of bros around that was already doing things and Lo and behold, you know, that like Louisville string. We had another one, God bless it, that bad vibes. Mm -hmm. And we just was jungling it around, just like, all right. I wasn't even a rapper. I wasn't even trying to rap, keep it a thousand. I was just behind the scenes. But I was on that reggae vibe, so I just brought that vibe to the to the whole scene. And they're like, nah, you gotta you gotta mix that like, in. You gonna rap. You gonna, <laughs> this is what you gonna do. I don't know what else you gonna do, but this is what you gonna do. It's the family business, this is what you gonna do. When, when you look, it's the family business, you can get in. <laughs> when you look back on the success of Soundboy and it really being one of those one, like you got a classic joint. You actually got a couple. I'm but talking lie. about Soundboy, um, when you look back at that, what does it make you feel? It feels great. I'm like um, performing it still, and and, and just the the fact that of of what it, the boom like you know I had I had the dreads before, right? So I'm like I could go up in the club and nobody knows who I am until I get on the stage. Crazy. So it's like, oh, that's, that's you the one that you did the guy. that. So I'm like, oh, it feel like I'm. I'm reinventing myself again, you know what I mean? Like, ain't like, oh, they go Toby about to go do that verse. 
<laughs> no doubt. And so we love it, man. Great. You know what? I think I want to give the people a treat. We're going to get into it right now. Listen, it's Rock the Bells Radio. Your boy Torrey is here. We are celebrating 30 years of the boot camp click. Woo. I told you the Queen Bernadette is here. When we get back, we're going to chop it up with her. Rest in power to the great Sean Price. Do remember hey. what? Yeah, we can go to you, Evil D. Nah, uh, you know, you know, I just, I just had an idea. I just, uh -oh. I just had an idea. Uh -oh. On the fly. This is what uh, we should do. I got this on the turntables right now. Let's just get into this. You know what I'm saying? I, I Let's say, just get into this. I was about to say, you never know when it comes <laughs> to Evil D. What these guys going to do. And no matter what, I don't care what you think right now, I was nervous. <laughs> <laughs> you got to watch out. Like, like, what is, what is this guy talking about? He does it all the time on stage. Let's get to it. Yo. Uh-oh. Anything that's from the clean vinegar. Anything that's from the clean vinegar. Anything that's from the clean vinegar. It's the mic back there, too. Smokey Lock. S-C-E-E-L-E. -E. -E -E. So let me break this down for you for everybody listening, riding around, whether you in the car or on that SXM app. You know we got the boot camp click here. I was throwing to some music. But as Smith and Wesson walked in the building, it only made sense. Evil D called the play, and now we running the play. Tech is here. Steel is here. It's only right to get to this. Rock the Bell Radio. Here we go. Smith and Wesson. Take one, take it back. back. Booyah, God. Mr. Ripper did the shooting. Cops heard the shot, and it's hot because they're pursuing. But it's my stomping ground where herbs get blown down. Think I'm getting caught by beats, you a damn clown. Check the drums of death as I break what's left for your face. Because you're selling out the rap race. Your family cries as your body lies in a casket. Keep a blacksmith and Wesson in my polo jacket. 16 shots for all your hard rocks. And if it's bitches to dime, she can get the what? Straight up and down with two terrible toughies Fix to hit your pockets and I made your eyes puffy What? What's better? Drop your mic and get to stepping Before you face to face with a blacksmith and Wesson and a Who is it? When I load the clip Who is it? When I load the clip Bust slant to the head Buck shot and ball head Bust to the head. Ow, ow. Oh shit, my personality split. And now I'm about to flip. Whip my nigga, pull the trigger, let the Glock spit. Boom. A little badass shorty with no remorse. I Yo, kill 40s and toss grenades on stage. So who the boss? Another crew grew up the scene. Drew up a plan to get green. green. Now I got sick of mean with my tag team. G Moon up here thinking of taking this. Uh -huh. The underground rules and ain't the move faking if you're thinking of making so it. Shut up and down, no respect to Bucktown. Home of the chrome where I roam, not giving the what now. Mm. Yeah, just when you thought it was safe so You come out with a rhyme, I got the nine to your face Boom, went up with Black Moon, now it's on for real Now we pack more steel, looking for a kill Hoping not the bitch is on the scope Cause the dread of bust lead from the back Smith and Wesson, no, say When I load the clip, bust lead to the head Right, left head, dread, buckshot and ball head Yeah, load the clip, bust lead to the head Left head, dread, buckshot and ball head Yeah, load the clip, bust lead to the head Real heads represent and don't die. Never dead, like I said, all we fucking do is multiply. I smoke mad bags of Buddha. Niggas be like, yo, who's shorty? I'm busting niggas with the six shooter. I get so much pussy with dick being stitches. Red bones and even hit the black Zulu riches. What? This little brother is a mass stalker. Brooklyn, New York, and rapping leash around your neck, and then I walk her. If you a bigger dude, bigger dudes get bucked. Cause I'm the buck, and I don't give a what. Man, listen, Buck is a killer, fill the nigga like the killer. Right. I'm small, but I'm strong like 10 fucking gorillas. A crazy little nigga put a Brooklyn on the map. Never gave a what, still don't give a fuck, cause I'm all that. I take no shit, see, give him a buck, 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 buck. I even blew his mitts, cause this man tried to snitch. When I load the clip, bust that to the head. Then after the head, buck shot in the forehead. When I load the clip, I bust that to the head. Then after the head, dread, buck shot in the forehead. Bust that to the head. Did I be head bust shot of head? When I load the clip, bust that to the head. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Anything test me out for clean to me gun. Enemy name, test me out for clean to me gun. Enemy name, test me out for clean to me gun. Enemy name, test me out for clean to me gun. Enemy name, test me out for clean to me gun. Enemy name, test me out for clean to me gun. Enemy name, test
when the clip is here, you just never know. So I'm sure you amped up for that, right? You saw that, you heard that. August 5th, Rock the Bells Festival is going down. Forest Hill Stadium, Queens. Get your tickets right now at rockthebellsfestival.com. We're going to jump into some music. We're yeah. going to pull up. Let's when we that. get back, we got Smith and Wesson. We're going to chop it up with the Queen Bernadette Price. Keep it right here, man. It's Rock the Bells Radio. You know the vibes. Yo. It is Rock the Bells Radio. Your boy Torre is here. The boot camp click is here. Make some noise. God damn it. <laughs> They will be touching down August 5th at that Rock the Bells Festival. The lineup is insane. Uh, when these guys and ladies get on the stage, boot camp, Brooklyn is super heavy. The Queen Bernadette Price is here. What's up, Burn? What up? What up? What up? Yeah, man. You see the, the street. The streets love you, Burn. P I love them. <laughs> Bernadette, obviously, being, being friends with Sean, being family with Sean, being around you guys for so long, I've always known you since I came into the fold. Mm -hmm. And I guess the hip hop community has known you because you would be at the shows and things of that nature. But you take it yes. to a whole nother level. You you rapping, not only Sean versus you doing your own thing. You really yeah. have, like we always talk about the, the woman, the black woman, especially being the backbone of this thing and, and really helping to continue to put the pieces together even after we think things have fell, fallen apart. Um, where did you get that desire to carry on the tradition for Sean the way you're doing it? I don't know. He always used to say, um, somebody got to live to tell a story. Mm. And then when he passed, I started having dreams of certain things. And I just, you know, kept going. Word. No nervousness, no shyness, no oh, none hell of that? yeah. It was a bunch of nervousness. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this dude here <laughs> used to be like, get in the front. Why you in the back for? Step up. I'd be like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. And now you've embraced it. I feel like you're super comfortable in it and you just be making moves. I still get nervous. Right. That's part of it, though. You mm -hmm. know, 20, 30 years later, we still get those butterflies. That's right. My legs start shaking. <laughs> you know, they took my bag away from me because it used to be my clutch. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we don't know what was in there. We're not going to speculate. Chill. <laughs> you bringing up old stuff. <laughs> Chill. <laughs> um... How how has it been for you, Sean's transition, your transition into the forefront and just holding it down? How's it been? How you been feeling? It's it's been hard, you know, a very emotional state. Um, but you know we get through it and, and me doing what I do, I know makes him proud okay. and it keeps him alive. So Shots. I keep shout, going. Shout out to little Mrs. Sean Price. Right. Yeah, shout yeah, out to my yeah. daughter Sean P. <laughs> she, 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 little Sean P gonna take yeah. it all the way oh, to the south. Ready. <laughs> she <laughs> ready. <Definitely> ready. <laughs> Uh, as you may have heard, if you just get in here, we got the boot camp click here. And if you've been riding with us, you already know the vibes. Um, Smith and Wesson are here. Tech is here. Steel is here. What's up, my brothers? Peace, Peace What's happening, brother? Great, great to see you both, Proud man. To the people. Yes, always, always. We've been going back and forth and forth and back and just talking about a little bit of the history. We know we got a new record that we are going to premiere as well. First record that you guys have all done together same, in same. a really, wow. a really long time. Long time. Long yeah, time. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to get the people amped up for that. Um, talk to me about the Smith & Wesson Journey Tech. I'll start with you. Um, let's go back to right before the debut album comes to Shining. What's on your mind? How you feeling? You know, Boot Camp Click and, and what, what Black Moon have done have already made a mark in the game. How do you guys feel like you're going to add to it? Um, truthfully, we I don't. my mind wasn't even focused on that at, at that time what were you focused on i i was still one foot in one foot out i was boxing going to college in the streets so it, it was just our big brother black moon struck first so it was like man we don't we still ain't sure if this is gonna happen for us so opening shows coming out in ski masks to deep covers it was, it was it was still being thrown to the lions then in uncharted water so right. Once we started recording, it was it was what they used to call back then making a demo. It was it was like, yo, we don't know which way this is gonna go. So it, it was still, you know, it was still pretty adventurous and rough to go out there and, and make it happen. Was you doing so many things? Where did MCN take place in your life? Like, where where was that priority rise? For me, MCN was not a priority at all, man. <laughs> I was doing. 
for me to get into the music, I, I wanted to be more of an engineer behind the boards. Crazy. My partner still wrote my very first verse. I was doing security because I was boxing, beating people up. Yeah, you was knocking and, people and, out. Yeah, we the, can say it. The, the Statue limitations yeah, yeah, passed. To keep them away from this guy. So that was my job. I wasn't even thinking about um, MCing, but we, we went to school with a, a bunch of dope artists like our man Cyclones. We went to school with Sticky Fingers from Onyx. We went to stu- school with Craig G from the Juice Crew. So this was all in Manhattan at GCA. Maxwell went to high school with us. So we, you know, God don't make no mistakes. He put us in the company of, of, of some greats and it just, you know, it was it was there. My family had a musical background. My pops was in the bands to play for a lot of people, musical instruments. My mom was a, a, a reverend. So, you yeah, know. It was there. It was there. It was there. It was written, as they say. Basically. General Steele. Yes, sir. You've always been, from my perspective and purview, the guy that had it together you oh. know like like your purview was off <laughs> you you had it together in <laughs> as as clearly you was as a, you're as far a, too kind you're as, far too kind no as as the full package mc from your delivery to the way you rhyme to styles see, see, um you you were doing so many things like ahead of your time is, is i guess how i could how i could say it best um but but always for me being like the nucleus of of what was happening with the whole entire clique. Talk to me about how you came into the music business, or, or rather, how you came into MCing and really finding your footing. Oh, that's an incredible question, man. Um, I'm a student. I'm a student in hip hop. I studied all of the people who I love. You know, so it's interesting that you say that because I, like, in my mind, before I developed a style, I would write a rhyme that sound like everybody who I like. So I had a. A, a KRS One rap, I had a Chuck D rap, I had a Rakim rap, you know what I mean? I had a, you know, a Big Daddy Kane rap, you know, an LL Cool J rap. So it, before you find yourself, you got to go through this journey. That's a fact. You know, I want I want to salute my sister and Buckshot's sister Tracy, you know what I mean? Because we, you know, we used to sit in, sit in the back of the uh, night school. We we two we two knuckleheads that messed up in, in school, so we had to do night school. So through your journey, you start to learn yourself. And being a nucleus, you say what I bring to the table is my 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 experience. And not to say I'm the boss or anything of that nature, but like my experience is valuable. And I think that I, when I bring it to my family, I think we all can grow. That's what boot camp was about, really. It's not about no rap people. Like, you know, me and Tech was friends before we started rhyming. You know, salute to PNC, big old pimp Rambo. You hear us talking about Rambo. These right. are people who that, that are very important to us. So we, we try to carry that through. And I always think about that when I write my rhymes and like how important is the people that touched you before you put your pen to the page and what they made you think about it, what they made you do and um, how you influence others. For sure, for sure, man. Yeah. Bootcamp click. That that, that, um, that synergy is real because I see where Drew at. <laughs> he over there. Drew's in the back. <laughs> Drew's in the back and still, this is my brother right here. For life. And for life. And what he, I'm just bugging out of the synergy of how, you know, me and Tracy. I was a dancer, right? I was in rhyme. I was in rhyming as I did. Tracy introduced me to Steel, <laughs> and was like, "Yo, I want you to meet my brother. He's a, you know, he's a good MC." And that when I first heard Steel, Steel had the record out first before anybody, and still I he blew me away. I was like, "This nigga's nasty." <laughs> Right, so we all got together and we linked up, and then we was rocking the show that that, that he had. And from that point on, it just became. It was a rap. It was a rap. It was a rock. Everybody. It was. We all became one one family. Yeah. For sure. But he is the that position that yeah. you said. See, That's I wasn't right. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> nah, you never wrong, That's man. The general. You know, come on, sure. man. We all we all generals in our own form fashion. That's why we the grade eight. No doubt. No you know doubt. I mean? You know, a lot of people talk about groups coming together, breaking up, disbanding, or whatever. You guys, front facing, have always been a unified clique, for lack of a better term. Um, but obviously, as in all families, you go through your ups and downs. But what kept you guys strong? What kept this this unit a tight family unit? All praise be to the Most High, man. First and foremost, and, and you know, like, what, what was what, we have we have our we have our trials and tribulations, like family. Like family can't run from you can't run from the bad stuff. Like things like we have individuals like when I'm fighting with Buck, or what we rarely do. Like if I'm fighting with anybody in the crew, somebody else gonna help 
you know, they're gonna mediate that. So we got so many brothers that'll help out. And Drew was a very important part of this whole movement too. You know, and there's so many people that you don't see that are our brothers and our sisters that help up. Uh, salute to my queen, Senegal. She's in the building as well. Okay, you know what I mean? Like the homies Phil, Brooklyn Combine, uh, PNC, Kenny Montgomery, Phil Shunk, Shunk, Philip Shunk. Like it's a lot of people that we have in our movement that when we start to f f fall a little short, they get us together. You know what I mean? Shout out to Taz, Taz on deck. You know what I mean? It's like, it's a lot of individuals that you don't see that's behind the scenes that that's boot camp. For sure. So we represent the face of boot camp. We the face card of the camp. You know what I mean? But the family is what keeps us really pushing forward. I like that. You know? That's, that's why he's the general still. Hold on, Rock. We can't, we can't hear you, Rock. I told you. I want to smile on that just a bit. Like, Hold on. Is Rock's mic going? My mic going for <laughs> Good, good. There, you go, there you go, there you go. I got the headphones in my hand. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm tripping here. Holy <laughs> I'm wilding. That's um, family. I always share my headphones. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm saying is just like, when you family, you ain't even got to like your family. You family because of blood. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? This is a family we built. You know what I mean? And it's no different than that, in that manner. You know what I mean? Like, we go through what we go through. We not I know Matt and my family members want to kick me out the whip. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yo, still, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I, I'm, I can't with you right now. <laughs> right, but it's like, you know, like, like you know, I, I harp on the difference between family and friendships a lot. You know what I mean? Because you can't choose your family, and usually that's a, that's a bad thing sometimes. Right, right. But in, in, in this regard, like, we chose this family. And no matter, you know, for, for, for you know, good, bad, and ugly, we 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 tied to each other and we appreciate it and we and, and we and we nurture that. You know, we treat it as such. We ain't gonna never, you know, see another one of our brothers all the way down and not pick them up. You know what it, I'm it, al it allows us a platform to deal with our humility and our vulnerability. That's why Sean Price is the best boot camp member. You know what I mean? And Sean Price is is the most honest. You know, he's the baddest mofo on ten toes. <laughs> That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? Still. And, and everybody love him. And when he say what he say, you got to either love it or hate it. And that's like, that's something to strive for because we don't want to deal with suppression. We don't want to deal with aggression because then we're going to start dealing with, what, depression. Mm. When we got to, that mental illness, it's like, when we say boot camp click, we talking about family. We talking about building each other up. That's why we came into existence because sure. we didn't have no, nobody co-signed us. We coast on each other and we stuck we stuck around each other Nobody. and we stood in the huddle. When we see us huddle and hustling, that's real for us. Nobody said, hey little brothers, we're gonna put y'all on and you need to beat this rap guy. I meet this rap. We did this. Buck met Drew High. He's like, yo, bro, we gonna we gonna go. The bros is coming up. It coming up right now. They right here. That's gonna help. When you see Ruck and Rock together, it's like it don't matter what they doing. You are gonna be intimidated. That's a fact. So, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> they on our side or what they coming? Right, what they, they, they doing? They right, with us? Good. I'm <laughs> not like that. People. Listen, I, I grew up in Coney Michael Island. Michael said sign them. We need to sign and, them. And there was. <laughs> no, you can't get I grew up in Coney Island. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Rock, <laughs> Rock know. <laughs> Rock know what I'm talking about. The camp know what I'm talking about. Um. So we got another live performance. We also have a brand new boot camp click record that we are going to be world premiering here on Rock the Bells Radio. So let's do this, man. Let's let's get in position. We're going to get the people Soundboy Burial live. Let's get everybody oh, situated. Right. Yeah, look, the, 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 the room is excited. We'll let Evil D jump into something. We come back. We're going to get to this live performance. Keep it right here. It's Rock the Bells Radio. If D on one or two. Rock the Bells Radio, we are back. Your boy Torre is here. Oh my God. Boot Camp Click, 30 years. This is classic, timeless hip hop. If you want something like this and more, make sure you get your tickets to that Rock the Bells Festival. Come on, check it out. Bye bye to a sound boy. Go by now, promote. No, no, stay man, them off your dead. Giving them two shots dead to him chin. And then me, your friend, fake the funk, I put the junk to an end. Now, who the rude boy want come test door? I find his family, the ID. I'm in the morgue. I bet you never thought I bust lead. Surprise, I'm a fortified smoke head, just like you the try dread. To test the champion sound. You're getting bucked down. Aye. Recognize our boot camp click out of Bucktown. Gun thirsty, look who bastard. Always blasted from the sacks of chocolate. A mother casting. You say you're number one wicked selector. I say you Panani and I wet ya. Keep the bull for a pull, it's your trigger. Cause you don't wanna test us when we tipsy off the liquor like the punk they call McGurk. Got his feelings hurt. 
Trojan shoe colors had to yank up his skirt. Now he's in misery. Uh, Trying to cop a plea. Glad to him have from gun clapper don't number three. Right. See, look off a shot, shot, you know the rider. Right look off shot, put on it on fun fire. Now, now everybody want me. Dog, dog, dog. All around the yuck, it's a bit hard, and but we be stalking. Yeah, yeah. And the dogs where the dog starts barking. Right. And the day you wear it up where you be walking. Don't. Be wary of where you be walking. Don't. Be wary of yeah. where you yeah. be walking. Be wary of where you be, where you be, where you be, where you be. Listen, when I sex, you right. rough like that wicked youth in me. Uh-huh. That mofo that be bugging off the truth we see. Original, now run the town. Crime pays, that's what we practice. So act if you won't get blasted by my nice oh, shot. Boy, boy. Come around my box, find a nice spot in the pine box. Right. Murderer, sound boy killer. Want to leave filler, we about to get illa. Sound boy, got no reason to worry. Coming with my troops, we about to bury. Let the pack get Dubs and move in a hurry. Ease off, sick. Looking at my pager, it's about that time cool. to load up my nine and do my daily crime. All my warriors, conquerors, the man before ya. Mr. Ripper, aka the enemy killer. My man with the weed is my man indeed. And all of sucky ducky niggas catch knots with speed. I told him, like that shit, smoke it. Like that, smoke it. Like that, smoke it. Lord, some boy I go and get dead tonight. Two pairs of retreat, the two five for my ten boots. Target pun sight, trigger pun pop. Adjust your pupils to see your dead boy. Enough pussy all go and die this year. Here comes my boot camp slotted to the rear like. Coming like a hurricane, licking shot. But what's up to move the niggas with the chicken box? Dreads and froze out to get the dough like this. From now until my nigga Louisville back the biscuit. Smith and West and OGC. Get the beast from the east and gun clapper number three. Real this. Feel this. Boom. It's black moon. Reveal this. We come and let them know what the deal is. Straight up. We serve justice. So if them can't be trusted, we ain't even turn with a Booyaka. Y'all gotta make some noise for that. Man. Man. Even if you in your car right now, you gotta make some noise for that. Roll the window down. Make some. No- if you listen on the SXM app, just shout out loud. Boot camp clip is here. Listen, I know you hype. I know you excited. I know you are. I feel your energy. August 5th, it goes down. Rock the Bells Festival, Forest Hill Stadium, Queens. Boot camp click will be touching down on that stage. And that is what you call strength, ladies and gentlemen. That is what you call strength. That is what you call. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of nice at this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brand new record from the boot camp click. What you call strength. We're going to world premiere it. Before we get into it, we got 60 seconds to talk about it. Anybody want to jump on and tell me about this brand new record? It's fire. We all on it, including Rusty Jukes. First and foremost, Rusty Jukes and, and Rockness Monster kicked it off. Right, Drew, uh, Drew High saw the long play, and he said, you know what, we can, we can spread it out and take it long way to the field. And then we came in and jumped in, me and Tech, we special teams, we got on board and said, yeah, we're going to carry it through. And then our young gunners came through and filled it out, and Buckshot brought it home. We just shot a video yesterday for a salute to, the, to the, all the people that was on deck. I can't remember the, the, the people that was on team uh, shooting, maybe Drew one step in, but everybody that, that showed us love. Uh, 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 Cody, was Cody thing. was holding us down. Was you know what I mean? The, the whole Cody team that was the out crew. there. The Rock the Bell crew allowed us to come in there and and and, and mess up some commas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and we did our oh, oh, got it, baby. It was, oh, got it, was, it. It, was, it was a beautiful it was a beautiful experience. I think you guys are gonna love the video. But uh, yeah. this is the family. These are the yeah, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. shooting yeah. stars. You heard? For sure, for sure, man. Listen, RockTheBellsFestival.com is where you can cop them tickets if you want to see these brothers and sisters touch down and or, and. Forest Hill Stadium, August 5th. We're going to get into this joint, man. Thank you for my Let's audience. Y'all make some noise. Thank you for my family for being here. I love all of y'all. Thank y'all for embracing me and making me a part of this family right here. Rock We're going to get to this brand you. new music, man. Listen, it only happens on LL Cool J's Rock the Bells Radio. Oh, they don't do it like we do it. That classic timeless hip hop. Let's break some bells with some new shit. She shot me. She shot ya. Sydney. Salute. Let's go. Exclusive. Pep, 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 pep.